Okay, so I'm recording. All right. Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to do uh, before I begin. There are two things that I want to do. First of all, uh, I want to point out that everybody should go in to where it says due dates and participation requirements. And I say this because some of you are not participating properly. Um, the uh, it may be it may be because of your schedule that you're not getting your primary um, your primary post in on time. Also, you know, some people have not put in their two uh, replies to students. So here, this this link takes you in to where it tells you exactly what's expected of you, and it's really something that you should look at, not just for my class but for every class. It's very important that you guys start getting this right because to be totally honest with you, um, to be totally honest with you, it's, it's very, very easy uh, credit for you. I mean, this is not hard to do. Uh, going in and replying to a couple of students, I mean, you gotta say more than just, yeah, good job, I like what you did. But still, I mean, you can, you can easily come up with 50 words very quickly to reply to a student and then come back some other time when you got another 15 minutes and reply to another student and boom, you've done that part. And as far as uh, coming up with a main topic, you know, usually the main topics are very clear. But anyway, my point is, please, everybody, go in and take a look at this so that you know what you are expected to do. It's very critical that you know, you, you know what you're supposed to do here. It's right here, due dates and participation requirements. Um, I got Gracie and Lori here. Lori, have you ever gone in and looked at this yet? How about you, Gracie? Have you? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of important because, like I say, it's easy. I, I personally think it's a lot easier than doing an assignment, and I definitely think it's uh, a lot easier than doing uh, your exam. So, I mean – when it's something relatively easy like this, you know, I mean, how hard is it to come up with uh, 150 words talking about a, a photo compositing? I mean, that's no problem. You can, you can easily go online and do a Google search for photo compositing in Photoshop, and you can find dozens and dozens and dozens of pages that you can read and come up with some, you know, thoughts as to what photo compositing means to you in Photoshop. So, I mean, it's, it's easy. I, I do it all the time, and uh, you know, it's it's easy. So I'm just saying that because I get I'm I'm amazed at at some people haven't done them. Other people have done them incredibly poorly. You know, and and when you're told to do things like embed pictures into the post, well, let me explain something to you guys. You should be embedding pictures in almost every one of your posts because we're graphic designers. We work visually. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely essential for you to start incorporating visuals into the work. It's part of what you do, you know. So your mind should be automatically thinking, what am I going to do for a visual, visual for this? It just makes perfect sense to do that. Right. right. And that's something I like to get done early so you have time to reply to other people. And it's a learning thing. I mean, Right. Yeah. And usually, usually it's not hard to come up with usually, what I generally do. When I go in and I write something like the photo composite, okay? So let's say my title is going to be the photo composite with Photoshop. So I'll, I'll go in and do a Google search for the photo composite in Photoshop or photo comp composing in Photoshop, okay? And then I hit go. And what will happen is I'll come up and there'll be tons and tons and tons of, of pages that I can look at. Now, there's a link where you can go and click on images. And once you click on images, you can go in and you can use the tools to choose any size image you want. And usually because the title or the search that you've done is photo compositing in Photoshop, you're going to come up with a ton of pictures. And so all you got to do is literally pull one picture out. And what I generally do is I generally pull a picture out and I generally uh, copy the, uh, the uh, link to it and I put the link into my post and... Uh, that's it. It's real simple. I have, a, I have one image, and while I'm looking for my, my um, information that I'm going to put in my post, I just jump over to where the photos are, and I take a look at the photos, and I guarantee you're going to find something that you're going to be able to use. I mean, it's really simple if you just organize your thinking when you do these projects, yeah. you know? 
not that difficult at all. No. no, and I'm I'm telling you flat out from my opinion because because you got to understand something, guys. Whether you guys realize it or not, I I am in this class with you. I'm a student in this class, just like you are. Everything that you are doing in this class, I am also doing. I write every discussion. I write, uh, I write replies. I write more replies than you guys do. I try to reply to everybody. Now, I, I'm not successful in, in replying to everybody, but I, I try to reply to everybody in there, okay, which is far more than you're asked to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I do all the assignments prior to coming in and demonstrating them in live session. So I'm actually doing them a couple of times where you're only doing them one time because i got to show you how I think you might approach doing it. You know, the only thing that I don't really do is go in and take the quizzes. I don't, I may go look at the quiz, but I don't really go in and take the quiz. But if the assessment involves doing something that, you know, is um, a, a graphic assessment where you have to come up with some kind of a visual, I, I, I want to do them too. So I just, I just want you to understand that. I mean, I'm like a student with you. I'm, I'm, I'm taking this class as much as you are. You know what I mean? I, re I, re I really appreciate your replies, Bill. In fact, I learned something already this morning from the reply. So thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, so anyway, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, uh, and, and I don't know, I assume both Lori, you and Gracie know how to do this, but I do have one student already who's replied and they haven't embedded their graphic They've right. linked it. So what happens when you link the graphic is you see where there's a link and you got to click on the link and download it and look at it. Right. So, That's what I had to do. To right. But, but the point is I don't want that. I want them embedded. I want you to embed the image like this. Do you see my – look, let me go down here. Let me go down to mine. Yeah, I see. Now, mine is actually embedded right into the – Right, that's what I did. Right, well, that's what, that's what you should do. It shouldn't be linked. Now, I have something linked here I want to show you. I actually took and I, I put a zip file in here. And what the zip file is basically, it's the Photoshop document for the image that I've embedded. So if you wanted to, and you don't have to do this, but if you wanted to, you could go in and you could take a look at the Photoshop file uh, of this and see how it's done. And then you can kind of read about what I said about it and how it's being done and okay. see whether you think uh, you agree or not, okay? Right. Yeah. But there's a, the difference is that that's something that's linked, and when you click on it, you get this, where you're going to yeah. download it into here. So right. instead, of, instead of being able to come into your post and just look at your image like this, you don't get that. So, you know, I, I, there are a couple of people in here I don't think know how to do this. I, I assume, Lori, Gracie, you know how to do this, right? You don't have a problem with this. No, not at all. Okay. But there are people, I think, that don't understand. Now, I'm in, I'm in the instructor. I'm not in one of the student areas. So how I would do this, and I'm going to ask you guys to uh, do me a favor and, and <laughs> just let me know if what I'm doing is the way you do it, okay? Okay. All right. So how I would do this, how I would embed this. All right. I have the ability to do it down here. First of all, let me go all the way down to the bottom here. Uh, where is it? Oh, uh, it's probably I have to actually have my, I have to be in the process of writing my document to get it. Right. Okay. So I can't do that here. But what I can do is I can go over to account and I click on account and I go down to files. Is this how you do it guys? That's exactly how yeah. I do it. Right. So all you're doing is you're going to go to account. Now, this is not how I do it because I can actually do it right from when I'm doing my discussion. But you go to account, you go to files, and you get this right here. Okay. And then what you do is you just click on upload. And you go in, and let me see if I can upload a file just for the hell of it. Let's see here. Go to uh, Where am I at here? I'm going to go to image editing. I think I'm in week three. Uh, let's see, do I have something in here? Angelic Thorn background. Where was it? Professional samples, career doors. There we go. Career doors and hit open. Okay. So now I've uploaded career doors. Do you see it guys right there? Yep. Okay. So now what I can do is I can go back 
And I'm going to see whether I'm going to be able to locate and put career doors in a page. So I'm going to come down here. Let's see if I come here and hit reply. Okay. And if I go to embed image, I'm going to go to canvas. And I think it's in course files. And I'm looking for. Mine's just under files. But. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Uh, career. It's not in there, is it? My files. Let me see if it's in my files. Hold on. It's in here somewhere. Uh, there it is. Career doors. Click yep. on career doors. Okay. And then scroll down and it's 400 by 500. Need to update. And there it is. Okay. It appears in there. Now that's how you guys do it, right? That's how I do it. Yeah. How about you, Gracie? Right there. Yeah. That's how I do it. Okay. So did I, did you think I did that clearly enough? You two? Oh Yeah. We were okay. taught this. I mean, I've been in school for two years now. We were taught this right off the bat. Right. Well, I have I have somebody that I think might not know how to do this, and I and I would like them to do it. I see. I believe this way. I believe that whatever you do to make yourself look professional, not only benefits you in my class, it's going to benefit you in every other instructor's class. And then when you get out of all of our classes, if you've gotten into the habit to do every to do things as professionally as possible, it's going to benefit you through the course of your career. So that's why I'm a, a stickler about doing things. I, I say to you people, you know, put titles in. I'm going to hit cancel because I just want to demonstrate it. Put titles in. You know, Moonlight Angel Composite, that's what the title is, by Monica Nokowski. Uh, so it's Bill Sweeney. I didn't put Bill Sweeney. February 10, 2017. That's the title for this, okay? Normally what I put in is Moonlight Angel Composite, uh, DES323, uh, Intermediate Image Editing, and then Bill Sweeney. That's, that's the other way to do it. But I did it this way tonight, and it's just as good. But it's a title. That's the whole point. And then, of course, embedding the image. And then make sure, make sure that you have an inline citation or in paragraph citation. You guys know what I'm talking about when I say inline citation or inline uh, in paragraph citation, right? Correct. In other words, the citation is actually shown within the, uh, the, the document. Now, it could either be in part of a paragraph, a line within a paragraph, or it could be a paragraph standing on its own. In my case right here, my citation, which is a big citation, it's a paragraphical citation, my citation is a standalone citation, okay? And I have made it italic so that it makes it stand out a little bit. Usually what I do, I usually go even a step further with this. Let me go in and I'll, and I'll give you an idea of what I generally do. Let's edit this. What I generally do with this is I generally do something along the lines of this, where I come in here and I select it. Not only do I make it italic, I can't seem to get the thing to go up. Oh, darn. Hold on. Let me open this thing up a little bit and let me bring it down. There we go. Okay. So what I would do normally, oh, come on. What I would do normally is I'd select it and then I would, uh, I would indent it slightly. It's italic, and then I would generally change the color of it, and I would make it a different color, just like that. And now, really, when you look at it, it, it becomes completely clear. Let me just, let me just uh, go down and save it. What happened? Done. Okay, here we go. There we are. Okay, now if you look at it, see, it really looks like a citation. Okay? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm, I know I'm being fussy and everything, but I'm being fussy not for my benefit as much as I'm trying to be fussy for your benefit. I think all these little things, I think they, they make you look more professional. All these little touches make you look more professional. And, you know, that's up to you to do it. I can tell you that I think you should do it, but it's up to you to take this on and do it, you know. And when I grade you for citation and reference, this is what I'm looking for for a citation. If I don't see something like this, you know, if I don't see Ricard 2015 in parentheses with, with some citation, I can't give you credit for a citation because it's not there. If you have a reference at the bottom, here's your reference down here. And here, by the way, is my, this is the uh, actual uh, link that I was telling you about for my picture. These are my references down here. I know if, you, if I see references, I will give you, and the references look like this, I will give you reference credit. 
But if I don't see an actual citation, something that looks like an actual citation, then I can't really say I see a citation and I can't grade on that, okay? So I'm, I'm just pointing these things out to you because, you know, you're going to make my job a lot easier if you do these things. It'll, it'll be a lot easier for me to look at your work and, exact, and, and, and verify the things that I'm looking for are there. And again, I, I truly believe that all of you by this point in your career, you should be thinking in terms of the elements that you need in your discussion. There should be a title. To your, to your discussion, the, there should be images, and you should have the citations, and the citations probably in some way or another should be highlighted to, to make them stand out against the regular te text, because a citation is not necessarily your thought. It's somebody else's thought that you are using to support what you are talking about just like the picture is is an image that's used to support what you are talking about I and I think most of you know this but again as I say I am not seeing these subtle little things done and I and I'd like to see them done and I'd like you to learn to do them not just for my class but all the way across the board it's very important that you get into the habit of doing these little things they're not that much work to do, and in the end, they make you look far more professional. And that's part of what I want to do, is to give you the opportunity to understand the things that you need to do to make yourself look as professional as possible. Uh, any thoughts or any questions from you? Um, I have an italicized sign with different colors, but like I said, we you know, learned this two years ago, and I mean, when you take the graphic design courses you take a lot of courses where you have to write i mean you know pretty large portion of it is is writing and it's got to be apa format so at this point in time i don't see you know what the issue is with you know putting a well i think some i think in certain cases Lori, i think it's just certain people you know don't want to be bothered with it it's almost like they they know they got to do this and they will do it, but they're not willing to put a lot of effort into it. You see what I mean? And, 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 you know, it's not just, the effort is not just for me. This is what I really want you to understand. The effort's not just for me. The effort's for yourself. You know, you, you get into the habit of working a certain way uh, so that you go out and compete with others. And the people that you're going to compete with, you know, maybe they got better, maybe they got better overall, uh, you know, habits than you. And they're going to look better than you. And it's going to make it harder for you to get work. So the little things that I tell you to do, uh, they, you know, they may be subtle little things, but people are going to notice this stuff. They're going to look at it and notice this stuff. The only reason I got into doing this much effort into this is because, and I don't know whether I mentioned it in this class or not, but I just, I just finished taking my master's degree in visual communications. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you're taking a course in visual communications, the very first thing that they hammer you on is your ability to communicate visually. That's what it's all about. So, you know, they talk to you about, you know, titling, how to title things, how to be consistent, how to be uniform, how to structure things in such a way that you're telling a story just visually before you even begin to read the words. You just look at what's there and you're telling a story. You're telling a person what a certain thing is, where to go, what you're expecting from it. That, that's part of the entire process. So, you know, again, it's not necessarily in this course directly, but it's the kind of thing I believe that all of your instructors should be saying to you. The only way you're going to learn this stuff is if your instructors tell you this stuff. So, you know, maybe not all the instructors tell you, but at least I've told you, and, and at least you've heard it from me. And I think it's an important thing to talk about, even if it's only for a few minutes. And I few times you just I mean it's second nature to me I don't even think about it it's just like okay I've been doing this for two years now every week and it's just boom 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 and you know I mean I, I try to get back to everybody and I don't get I can't get back to every single person usually but I try to get back to as many people as I can but as far as I just figure you know the more APA reference you do and your title and all that and your references or citations it's just a habit well there that when you say it's a habit Lori, that's that's i think that's what i'm the point i'm trying to make 
it if you do this, if you do this for a little while, it will become a habit. It will become just the way you do these things. And what I'm trying to tell you is it's the right way to do it. So all I'm saying is that, you know, it might be a pain in the neck for a short period of time, but once you get into the habit of doing this this way, you're going to, it's no longer going to be a pain in the neck. It's, it's just the way you do it and it's the right way to do it. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay, again, I'm not going to, I don't want to make a whole night lesson out of it, I, I, but I, I, do, I do point this out because I, I, I'm trying to do things in my, in my short period of time with you that will influence you and help you and make you better at what you do. And even if it's something subtle, like just talking about the proper techniques that you employ, you know, to put together a, a visual uh, presentation um, in, in, a, in a discussion, a primary post in a discussion. I mean, see, I even, I even managed to use bulleted points in here. You know what I mean? It's just, I, I try to, to use things that, you know, make it look like I'm trying to give some information across. It's not just one big, I've seen people come in and see all the copy that I have here. Yeah. All my copy, not that mine is incredibly long, but I have seen people come in and they don't even have paragraphs broken. They basically got one ginormous run-on sentence. It's not a sentence, but it's a paragraph. It goes sentence after sentence after sentence. They don't even stop the paragraphs and split them. It's just, it's just you know, a big block of copy. And you look at it and go, oh, my God, you know? And honestly, those are sometimes the ones that I won't reply to because it's like, you know, especially when I'm not feeling well and I'm not trying to be mean or leave anybody out, but it's like, if I've already made, you know, 12 replies, sorry. Yeah, you've done I'm, your job. I'm not going to make the effort to read something that's number one, very illegible and hard to read and then try to decipher. And then if there's no grammar in it, okay, yeah, I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. No, it's okay. I understand. Uh, again, though, I, I have to I have to reply to a lot. I gotta go. I gotta reply at least to through uh, almost every day of the week. I gotta go in and do a couple of replies, even if it's not more than a couple. I gotta do every, you know, every day, and I try to do as many as I possibly can. Which in itself is a big is a big struggle because you know you almost find yourself very uh, often repeating things, you know, and it just seems like difficult because you're always trying to say something different to somebody. And sometimes, you know, it's like you almost are tempted to say the same thing, you know? Right. So, all right. Well, I want to get on to the assignment. And what I also did this week, guys, is, and I don't know how well this is going to work, but I, I am going to give it, I'm going to give it a shot. And you guys, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to report back to me after you take the exam whether this worked or not. What I did was I went in, and I'll, I don't know whether we'll get to it tonight or we'll get to it tomorrow night. Don't forget, we got tomorrow night too. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through their 15 questions in the exam. I'm going to give you general a general idea of the things that you need. I cannot tell you what the questions are directly, and I can't tell you precisely what you're looking for, but I can give you a general idea of what you're looking for in the questions in the exam. I don't know how well it's going to help you. It's an experiment. Excuse me. I've never really done it before, and we'll see how it works, okay? Sounds good. My feeling is it's better than nothing, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. All right. So anyway, the uh, first thing that I want to do before we get started here, the assignment, let me go to the assignment and we'll stop. Okay. Because what I want to do is uh, I, I want to go in and okay. So here we go. All right. So anyway, see, first of all, see how I got this picture of this girl with the centaur with the body. They don't even have that picture. We don't even have that picture in there. You know, they get these pictures that, where do you see this? It's just, it's just absolutely insanity how this is done. But anyway, we'll make the best of it. Let me go into Photoshop. Okay, so this is the, this is the picture that I used in my discussion. I got this from the Adobe website. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because there's a ton of layers in here. Look at all these layers and look at all these. Look, there's a shadow. There's a, uh, there's a brightness and contrast adjustment. There's a gradient fill. There's a brightness adjustment contrast on another layer. There's an exposure on another layer. There's a second gradient fill. I mean, look at how crazy this is. Look at this. And, and, you know, there's like a sky area, there's a, a color balance, there's a background, there's a, a foreground. This is actually the foreground. 
okay? See there, see the foreground's hidden. And then there's another foreground beneath that or somewhere. I'm not exactly even sure where that is. It's here somewhere. Uh, where the heck is it? Look, it's right there. It's way up here. But can you, can you see my point? Look at how complicated this, this one little image is. I mean, this image is really pretty cool. It's, it's, I, it, it is not the, the best uh, composite I've ever seen in my life. It's a little bit weird. But my point is, and the reason I chose it was because when I looked at the fact that it, it gave me a Photoshop file that I could actually give you, that you could actually look at and examine and see all it takes to do this particular image, I thought that was a good idea. So that's why I chose it, and that's why if you go into my discussion, you'll see at the very bottom there's a zip file. What's in that zip file is the Angelic Thorn PSD file that I'm looking at right here. So you can actually download that, and you can open it up, and you can play around with the different layers and see what the different layers do. And you can sort of, as you close these layers off, you can see parts of this thing literally fall away. All right, so I just I just thought I would I just thought I would you know show you this because this is really you know the whole thing in a nutshell. All right, now what I do want to do is, and again I'm not going to do anything other than I, I'm just sh pointing this out to you so that you can see what I have. All right, but what I do want to do before we get started is I want to go open. And I want to show you a couple of things that I created. So I showed you that picture of the career doors before. So here's, I'm going to open up this career doors. So what I did, this was one, one of the things that I did for Lincoln Educational Services. And basically, what this is, this was the original picture. And I think I got this picture originally. I got it from um, Shutterstock or something. I think it was one of the Shutterstock images that I purchased. And there was a guy as well. So anyway, this is the background image, which are these doors. Okay. Now, I don't I got a human saturation level because what I wanted to do is I wanted to desaturate all this. Okay. I wanted to remove the color. The colors didn't do me any good. And actually, once I did this, I don't even need the hue and saturation because what I did was I went in and I... I created different images that go into this door, into each one of these doors. And each one of these little images that you see represents one of the areas that the school taught. Like, for instance, this was computer, this is medical, um, this was uh, got a, uh, engineering maybe, this was um, medical, uh, medical uh, bookkeeping or whatever, this was a um, computer, and this was uh, pharmacy. See, I, I don't even remember now what the actual names of these are, but you can see, and the, the point of it was that I had this student here. Here's my student, okay? And I created for the student a shadow so that the shadow looks like he's walking in the direction of these doors. And then what I did was I created a drop-off, okay? So there is the final image that I created. Now, this image is nowhere near as complex as the little girl that I just shown you, but you can see that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got 11 layers here to create that one image, okay? And the image is kind of interesting, and the whole image starts off looking like this. This is the whole point. This is what the actual image looked like. That's what it started out like. The rest of this image was me coming up with, and I missed one of them, was me coming up with, you know, some way of demonstrating the school and what the school does for the student, okay? So that, that's one of the images that I did. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because, you know, I, I want you to understand that the things that you're learning in this course are very valuable, and they are things that you, I guarantee you, will use for the rest of your life. And, you know, you're learning techniques that are central to the kind of work that you will come across. You may not come across exactly what I've done here, but you will come across this sort of work. Oh, yeah. And I will show you a couple more, and then I'm going to actually begin to work on our assignment for this week. But let me just show you a couple more. Uh, all right, come on. Let's go file open. Come on, you. There we go. All right, let's go to Beauticians 1 and hit open. Okay, now this is, this is the picture. I had this picture, okay? And what I did with this picture, basically, 
was I started off, let me hide this picture. I started off by silhouetting part of her. Okay, I didn't silhouette the entire thing. I just silhouetted her back. See how I just silhouetted half of her? Mm -hmm. And I left this black over here. Okay, so then what I did was I added a black background. Okay, so now I got her sitting against a black background, which even though this has got a little bit of texture to it, that's cool because that texture adds interest. It adds something unique to the picture, whereas this is just basically flat black and kind of boring. But the important thing is I have this photo here, okay, of this girl. And what I did literally was I used a gradient mask to kind of make this girl fade into the picture. Now, if I disable this mask, let me see if I can disable this mask. Oh, hold on. I hit the wrong button. There we go. If you see, see what I've done, I've disabled the mask. You see what it looks like when I disable the mask? Yeah. Right. And if you put this girl in front of it, you can see the effect is lost, isn't it? Right. Right. Yep. But if you, uh, if you enable the mask, now all of a sudden, you go select, deselect. Now all of a sudden, the overall image works very well. Okay? Cool. All right. So again, not one, two, three. This was rather simple. But again, what I'm doing basically is I'm masking the girl in a certain way. And you can see it's a pretty good mask. I mean, it looks pretty believable, you know? Um, masked her. I uh, used a gradient mask, which is re relatively simple. I just basically, you know, made it made the hand disappear basically into her, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I used the black area. If you see if you hide that black area, you don't really get you don't really get the effect. With right. the black area in place like that, the effect is works. The whole thing works. Very cool, Bill. Yeah. I love it when you show your personal examples. I, I only reason I'm doing this, only reason I'm doing this is because, you know, I, I, I want to really impress upon you that there, there are definitely real world applications to what we're doing. And even though maybe some of the things that we're doing are kind of silly, what you're learning is something that's not silly at all. And it's incredibly yeah. useful. And that's, I think, what's most important. I don't want to spend the whole night on this, but I will show you one more. Let me go in here and see if I can find one more. Uh, I think the actual uh, Ferrari is kind of cool. I was just going to say, since I'm the car fanatic here, I'd love to see the Ferrari. So here's the Ferrari. Let me hide the entire Ferrari, and I'll show you how this one works. Okay, so here's – this is what I started off with. Um, this Ferrari was a shot that was given – somebody went into, I guess, a Ferrari dealer or an exotic car de dealer and took this front shot of the Ferrari. And I, it was one of the shots that I was given in a, in a big folder of images. And I was supposed to make some car images. Now, these images were going to be used on postcards for this school, okay? Um, so what I decided to do, I started off – by, let me hide this for a second. I started off by silhouetting the car. Okay, so there's the car silhouetted and sized. Okay, that's the first step. Now I'm going to hide that because what I did was I created a background. So this is my color background. And what it is basically, it's just a gradient. And along the top, it gets to black. And down at the bottom, it gets kind of red. And it, you know, it's, it, the red's nice. It works with the car very well. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to add a little interest at the bottom. So on a separate layer, I used this layer here, okay? And can you see I used linear burn? Yeah. So I used I, I used it. Now, this one here is normal because I didn't want – I just wanted basically to have a color background. That's right. actually the color background. The drop-off – I used linear burn so that it would burn into the background. And what would happen is the white area, you see it's, it does have a white area. Mm -hmm. So that white area is gone. It goes right into the background and it creates that interesting line right there. Yeah. Okay. So let me bring the car up because then the car is there. But you see the problem with the car is it's kind of, um, it's kind of acidy yellow a little bit around the edges and it's way yeah. too bright. So what I did literally was I came in here and I played her, I tinkered around with the car. So I have this area for the car glass. I'll bring that in. See how that, you see how that darkens that down a little bit? Yep. Right. And this thing is also, this is saturation. The layer that I, after I did this, I used saturation. What this has on it, it has an effect on it. And the effect is inner glow. Inner glow, okay. Yeah, so essentially what it is, it's really that car, 
okay? It's the same car, and this car has an effect of inner glow on it too. So both of these things have an inner glow on them, and the reason I used both of them with the inner glow is I wanted to really pump up that inner glow to make it appear as though it were on a street and the lights were kind of beaming down on it, yeah. and you were seeing the dark around the edges of it. Yeah, I was really trying to do that. Now, I also have a rear window here, okay, because I wanted to darken out that rear window. Okay, so that's on a separate layer, and there's not this one is just basically linear burn, but there's no effect on it. So I'm using an effect on this, an effect on this. Now I have this flame which I added to it. Actually, let me let me um, let me come down here and let me show you the background that I apply behind this thing. I want it to appear as though it were racing or or actually sitting on a street. So there it is. I added this this image to give it that real cool kind of motion look to in the right. back. And I also have this thing, it looks like it's floating very unnaturally. So right. what I did was I came in and I added a shadow underneath it, which gives it some depth. And also, do you see how it cuts some real nicely up to the edge of the car? Yep, sure yeah, does. it really brings that car into reality. And then one final thing, just to go over the top with it, I, I created this, gra this flame graphic in, in Adobe Illustrator, and I added that behind it just to, again, to just throw it over the top a little bit. Yeah, I like it. Right. So, again, you know, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers, eight, nine layers, and we're looking at um, blend modes, there's saturation here, rear window is linear burn, this one here is normal, which makes sense because you want the car, and I have an inner glow and an inner glow on these two so that I get this nice effect here, which really puts it atmospherically in the car, or I mean in the scene, right? In the scene, yeah, right. very cool. Yeah, and then this thing here, I've actually, uh, I got this thing set to normal, but I have an effect on it, and it's bevel and emboss. That's the effect, and that's what, okay, right. I'm now, gonna... also, I, this was, I have a fill, a gradient, I mean a fill. What I did with this, let me show you. The fill basically, see, that's what it would look like if I removed the fill. And I thought that was too strong. Yeah. So yeah. what I did was, instead of making the opacity, I wanted to keep the bevel showing. So instead of, instead of removing the opacity, which would make the whole thing just go lighter, not what I'm looking for, okay? What I was looking for is I was looking for the bevel to show. So instead, I took the fill, and I brought the fill down to about 50, yeah. see? And now the bevel stays nice and bright, yeah. but the fill, now if I remove that fill, watch what happens. You see what I get? Yeah. I get a really cool looking bevel because the bevel hasn't, the opacity hasn't been changed on the bevel. Just right. what's in, right. yeah. Yeah, right. so I'm looking at around 50 to make this right. So what I'm saying to you is I've been doing this for a very long time, and all these things I'm, I'm kind of cued into what they do. What you're doing and what I'm trying to do is to help you be aware of the stuff that's in here so that you could begin the process of doing these things, these interesting graphics. That's what this is really all about. And again, I, I mean, these were projects that I actually did. This, this was an actual a card. It was actually produced as a, as a card. I should show you one more because I should show you what the final card looks like. And I'm not going to go into big lengths with this one, but I will show you. Let me go to file open and let me go to the massage one right here. And I'm just going to show everything so that you can see. Okay, so there you go. There is the actual card. So it's Lincoln Technical Institution, Your Future Now, that's their trade line. And what I did essentially was I have two layers. This is the this is the Your Future Now layer, okay? And then this is the Lincoln layer, which has the bevel attached to it. Uh -huh. And then this is the actual background color of that um, uh, logo. And then over here is the little bamboo. If you can see, the bamboo has a gradient attached to it so that it, it literally disappears as it goes in other words I didn't want to I didn't want to cover the girl I wanted it to kind of die into the girl okay right. and it's the same thing with this little water uh, spout with the with the freight with the yeah I have that see so that's the actual picture that's what the actual picture of the girl looks like okay really cool. so yeah so I added this over here added this over here so I get a kind of interesting montage of things that really relate to her having this sensual moment, you know, getting massaged. And then, of course, we brought in the Lincoln logo, and I put a nice bevel on it. And right in the middle here where I have space, 
your future now. And this was made into a postcard. So again, my point is, these are real applications to the things that we are learning in here. Of course, there's a little bit more to what I'm doing here, but the, the kind of things right that we're doing in here are exactly what we're doing in our projects. Okay. Exactly. And you've got to learn the tools to be able to do this stuff. I mean, that's the whole point to me. Right. Right. And at least I'm showing you, I'm giving you some idea of where these things are coming from, you know? Yeah. Right. So, so here's the deal. Uh, oh, and by the way, one other thing I do want to say, uh, next week, I want you all to think about this. Uh, Monday or Tuesday night, probably Monday night, uh, I'm going to be holding critiques. So if you have any of the work that you've done up until next Monday that okay. you'd like to have an uh, in-class critique on, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to zip the Photoshop file, uh, and it could be anything. It could just be a mask. One, maybe you just want me to look at one of your pieces and see you know, how well you did your mask and talk a little bit about how you did your mask. Um, anything you would want me to look at, zip it to me and send it to me, and Monday night we'll have a critique on it, okay? Perfect. So just email you. Do you just want the... Uh, yeah, the Photoshop answer? file, yeah, because we're working pretty much in Photoshop in all of this. So, so yeah, so just zip the Photoshop file and send it to me. You don't have to have like, like, let me, let me open this up file open. Hold on. Let me go in here and let me go to week three and let me go to human. Let's start with a human and let me go into here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is the first thing I want to do is while I got this open. All right. I just want to point out to you that there are some pretty lousy photos in here, okay? First of all, this girl, I wouldn't even try to use her. It just, watch. I mean, it, it, she's going to be absolutely impossible. Oh, my God. Right, she's going to be impossible to silhouette, and there's no way to really utilize her arm, and her arm is missing here, and she's not in the right angle for the horses, really, and wow. she is under. she's sort of like, um, washed out looking. So you, I mean, I just, and, and this, this, um, top that she's wearing, you're going to struggle to try to get this thing, you know, to show. I, I just, and, and even her hair, look at her hair. There's no detail in her hair. It's horrible. It's a terrible photo. So I'm showing you this because I'm just saying you probably want to stay away from this photo. Now there's another photo that I think you probably should stay away from as well. Let me go in here and whoop, what did I shut it? Hold on. Let me do it this way. Uh, week three, hold on, uh, human, here we go, and save. The other one that I think you probably want to stay away from, I guess, would be this as well. And the reason that you'd want to stay away from this one is because, the, again, he's, his head's cut off. That's the first thing. His head's cut off. Uh, his, his hand, he's got boxing gloves on it. I mean, he's standing sideways. There's not right. one horse that you have right. that's standing directly sideways. It's just not a photo right. that you're going to have any luck with, okay? And it's going to be hard. So I'm just showing you these two photos. You should probably stay away from them. That leaves you with this photo right here, okay? This photo right here, which I'm going to work on tonight, and this photo right here, which I'm also going to work on tonight, and this photo right here, which, again, I, I don't think, I mean, you can try this, but I, I just don't think it's going to work very well for you. You know, I mean, look, he's, he's holding on down here, and, and this thing goes all the way up here. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a terrible photo, yeah. you know? So I'm just saying, I'm just saying in all reality, let me just go back in here and just to give you an idea, here are the horses, okay? So you got this right here, which is a mule, which is terrible. I, I wouldn't use this picture either, okay? You got this picture here, which is a, a beauty. This is a really good picture, and we're going to use this picture. But I want you to also, if you can, sort of take notice of how these horses are standing and look at, look at how they're standing and look at the pictures and see whether the, the pictures make sense with the way the horses stand. They don't entirely. And I'm going to show you in a minute what I'm talking about. So here's that. There's this one here, which is a pretty good one. This is a really nice one, okay? They're actually pretty nice. The horses are actually much nicer. This is a nice one as well. The horses are much nicer than the people. Now, what I want to do very quickly before we 
uh, get any further with this is let me just show you a couple of these things that I did. Now, do me a favor. Don't laugh. I mean, it, these are such a joke. It, it's terrible. Uh, I can't find this one. Hold on. Let me, find, let me see if I can find this one. Yeah, hold on. It's opening it. Okay, so there is my there is the one of the ones that I did. Uh huh. Okay, so you can see the problem. I mean, if you look at the horse, the horse is so incredibly wonderfully animated, and then you've got this stiff looking guy right there. I mean, it's a. It, I the only thing I can tell you is, please try to understand this. The goal here is not to come up with a with an amazing piece of art. What the goal is is to come up with a beautifully a beautifully silhouetted horse and a beautifully silhouetted body and then merge the two together the best you can and that is as much as i can expect you to do do you guys understand this i do yeah i mean it's like it's like week 1 all over again what was the problem with week 1 the problem with week one was that we had this shaky photo, and you would you would you know do this really nice um, technique where you're actually trying to isolate the little dog so that you could show the one dog moving and the other dog not moving. And because the the video was so jittery, the video was bouncing up and down, and it looked yeah. like ridiculous. Well, the problem we have here. And there is no true way to solve this without going into craziness, which we're not going to do. Uh, there's no real way to solve this other than to do the best you can with it. So again, what I'm saying is focus on doing a beautiful job silhouetting the horse, doing a beautiful job silhouetting the, the character, and put the character as best you can into the horse like I did and call it a day. Okay? If you do a nice job with this, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to show you the other ones. Let me file open. Let me go in and show you the other ones that I did. Uh, let's go to human. I think it's, uh, let's see, week three. Uh, male. I think, wait a minute. I wanna, I'm looking for a horse. Let's see here. Horse one final. I think those are my cutouts. Wait a minute. Where would they be? Um, Oh, hold on. Bear with me for a second. Sure. Week three, Wonder Water, week three. Okay, here we go. Centaur, what do I have open? Which one is that? It's that Centaur, that's horse two. Okay, Centaur three. Let's try Centaur three, see what that is. I guess that's the same one. Yeah. Right, let me close horse three. Okay, we go file open, and let's go to Centaur, because that's another one. Okay, so there's my there's my other centaur. Let's see if I have a background for him. I don't have a background for him. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a layer, and I want to drag the layer all the way to the bottom. And all I'm going to do with that layer is I'm going to dump some red into it so that you could see what he looks like. Where's my bucket? There it is. Let me bucket. There we go. Okay, so you see that's what that horse looks like. That's right. what the centaur looks like. Okay. So I'm only showing you these because I want you to have an idea before I actually begin the process of show. Tonight I'm going to focus on, uh, I'm going to focus on just the three men. And tomorrow night we're going to do the horse and I'm going to show you how to put them together. Okay. okay. So step one is going to be tonight me working on the men and, and showing you the different possibilities as far as working on the men. Now, if you take a look at this horse and this male, and it's the same with this guy over here, you can see he's actually pretty well, they're, they're very well cut out. Right. And you don't have a lot of, of crap around the edges. The fringing's pretty much gone, okay? Now, against red, it, it is a little bit stark. But what's going to happen is next week, we're going to turn this into a magazine or a, a book cover. And, and we're going to have a background behind it. It's not going to be a red color like this. It's going to be a background. And once we put the background into it, and once we do some of the things that we did, that, that you know, that little uh, girl that I showed you, that little um, yeah. yeah thorn, whatever, thorn angel or whatever, uh, when we do a couple of things like that to make this guy, you know, look right in his background, it's going to look beautiful, okay? Right. But right now he's against red, so it looks a little bit stark. So there's the yeah. second one, and let me see if I can show you the third one. And again, see, the, I, I, I admit it, they're a little bit ridiculous looking, and that's because the photos aren't all that good. Actually, right. 
this guy's probably the best one to use. Uh, so let me go open and let me see if I can find my third one. Centaur. What do I got out there? I got three and I got Centaur. So it's going to be two. You got here. There's the third one. Okay. Okay. So there's the three of them. Now this guy here, I, I need to color him a little differently because he's a little stark against this horse down here. He needs to be yeah. colored somehow so that his coloration works a little bit better with the horse. But you get the general idea. This is what we're aiming for this week. This is what we're going to be doing this week. Next week, and you don't have to do all three of these. You know that. You only have right. to do one. Now, I'm going to show you how to do all three of these guys because I want to make sure that I show you everything that you can possibly know to do this because it is, um, well, I mean, it's not terribly different than what you did last week except that you're cutting out a different thing. Last week, you were cutting a dress off of a girl. What we're right. doing in this is we're, we're going to take this guy and we're going to remove him from his background. And one of the things that I want to show you real quickly, I'll, I'll so you guys are okay with this? You have any questions about any three of these things? I'm good so far. Okay, so let me dump them because we're not going to really use them anymore. Let me get rid of that and that. Okay, now before we actually do this, let me go back to horror. Let me go back to week three to uh, human. And there was a couple of things I just wanted to point out real quickly. Now, um, this guy here is one of the pictures. And as you can see, he's against a nice white background. Okay, I just want you to note this. He's against an absolute white background. That right. means at some point or another, he was either green screened or masked out once already. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be masking him a second time, which is always more difficult. Okay. Right. Now this guy here, let's see, this guy here, he's in a more naturalistic environment. He's against a white background, but as you can see, there's a certain amount of gray going on here. Uh -huh. Okay. So he's more natural. And this guy here, he's in the same general situation. He's against the background that it's probably a white screen behind him, but see, you can see a little bit of shadow going off of him. So these two are more normal. This guy here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, these, this, this is one shot of the guy. These guys were silhouetted once before. So whenever you're working with something that's been silhouetted once before, you know, it's kind of like you got a little bit more of a problem with it. Right. Um, I mean, I used the one in the middle. I don't know how we could use the one in the back because none of the horses really are in that kind of orientation. And there's no picture in there that really needs a guy standing sideways like that. It just ain't going to work. So the only one that we could use is this guy in the middle. All right, so uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll start with one of these pictures. Let me go file open. Let me get started on this. So let's see. I'm going to go into human, and I'm going to go save. And I guess I'll start with this guy right here and hit open. Okay, so here he is. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut this guy out. So the first thing I want to do is I want to sort of simplify things. So I'm going to drag out a couple of guides, just like I'm doing, okay? And I'm going to come up my selection tool. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make a selection around this guy, just about like that. It doesn't matter how far you go at the bottom here. Give yourself some clearance at the top. Make sure you got good clearance here and here. But it doesn't matter how far you go down at the bottom because we're not using the pants anyway. Okay? So you see what I just did? I just made a selection. Any questions? You're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to go file, or I'm going to go image crop. Sorry. Image crop. There. And I'm going to go file save as and for my purposes here i'm just going to call him male m-a-l-e male underscore one okay and i'm going to change him from jpeg to photoshop psd okay now i have these in here that i've already worked on but i'm just going to start over with this all right so i'm going to go select deselect all right now there's a several ways now the first thing i want to do actually before i begin I want to zoom in a little bit on his, on his lower area. Uh, right away, we don't need the pants at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make a fairly rough selection right along the top of his pants, just like this. So, and, I, and there's a reason I'm doing this. Come over here, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to carefully, carefully go around 
the finger. I don't, I don't want to lose any of his finger here, but I do want to block those pants. I probably should have enlarged this, but I didn't. So I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go all the way around here like this and come all the way up to there. And now I've got that thing selected, okay? I'm going to hit default black and white and I'm going to change the foreground color to white. So you all got that? Yep. No question about what I'm doing? No. Nope. You have any idea what I'm about to do? Get rid of the pants. That's right, you got it. And I'm just gonna come over here, and if I wanted to, I'll make sure I'm on the right layer, yeah. I come in here and I hit the paint bucket tool a couple of times, and actually, if it doesn't work, if it's giving me trouble, I just paint out the rest of it. I'll just come in here and paint out the rest of it. Because I don't need the pants at all. I just paint the pants away. Do I have it set to 100? I do. Yeah, it's giving me a little trouble painting this stuff away, but you just get it gone. It'll be gone in a second. Some of it's being very troublesome. I guess that's it. That'll, that'll be good. Okay, select, deselect. Okay, and now I'm going to go view, fit on screen, and I'm going to go file, save. All right, now the reason I'm saving this is because I'm going to be doing a couple of different things. First of all, I'm going to unlock this layer, okay? To unlock the layer, you know that you just click on the lock, right? And now the layer's unlocked? Right. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer. Uh, what I always do, and when I'm working on stuff like this, I do two things. Every time I do two things. The first thing that I do is I open up my picture, and I didn't do it in this case, but I open up my picture and I go to image, image size, and I come in here and I see what size this is. So this is inches. So this is, uh, it has a width of 13 inches by 20. So that's actually pretty big. And it's got a resolution of 240, okay? Which I'm not gonna mess with because you know what? I, I don't need to mess with this. I'm just showing you that it's always a good idea to know what you're dealing with. If this said one inch by three and, and it was 240, this picture would be too small for me to do anything with. Right. But it's 13, the height is 20. That's a nice big image. I can easily change the resolution to 300 if I wanted to or go down if I wanted to. In this case, though, I'm not going to change it. I'm just pointing out it is important for you to know what you're working on. You guys understand that, right? I'm not just saying this to waste time. It's right. always a good idea when you work on things like this to know what you're dealing with. And the reason that is, is I've made the mistake of not doing that and have worked for hours on something only to find out that the resolution wasn't there for the print job that I was doing it for. And I made myself look like a total idiot. So I always recommend that you check these things out, really. All right. So now I've duplicated this layer. So what I want to do is I'll hide this layer. I don't have to. What I want to do is I'm, I'm going to start extracting this guy from his background. I know of two ways to do this. There is the first way, which, well, there's, I know of four ways to do it. One way would be for me to use the polygon lasso tool and for me to try to lasso this guy, which would be stupid, okay? The other way I know how to do it would be to come down here with the pen tool and draw this guy with the pen tool, which also would be stupid. Now, it might be okay to draw or use the polygon lasso tool to remove certain small areas of this guy, but in terms of actually trying to get him completely out of his background, it would be a stupid move. So you understand that? Yeah. It's all a question of, of knowing the possibilities and when the possibilities make sense. What, what makes sense to do, okay? All right, so the first thing that I would do here is I would come in here and you got your magic wand tool. The magic wand tool probably would work, but I prefer the quick selection tool. And I'm going to, there's three settings up here. This is kind of important for you to recognize. You have a new selection, you have add to selection, and you have subtract from selection. Now, right now, this thing is set to add to selection, all right? I don't need that. I can just click on regular selection. You could actually leave add to selection. It won't hurt anything. But I'm going to just regular start with a regular selection. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to bring up the size of my uh, cursor to about, that's too big. And I'm using, I'm using, what, does anybody know what brackets? Oh, I just said it. What I'm using to do that? 
using the square brackets, right? The fancy yeah. brackets and the square yeah, brackets. brackets. Yeah, yeah. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is right here. And the reason I'm showing you, or actually it's right here. The reason I'm showing you this is because this will give you the size that you can choose the size, but it also gives you the hardness. Right. Now, right now, I've got this thing set to 100%, which means it's absolutely hard. I could go the other way and make it soft. You see what the little icon looks like when I do that? It's blurry. Yeah, that means it's a soft, uh, it's a soft selection. But in this particular case, I want to go to the hard. So I bring the, the hard up, and that's what it should look like, 181. And that's probably about a good size for this. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to click, and I'm just going to drag through this guy's body, and I'm going to grab everything. I'm just going to come down here, carefully go down his body, and try to get everything. There we go. Okay? Now, I notice a couple of things right off the bat. I didn't get his ear. See his ear? Oh, yeah. I'm having trouble with the hair up here. Mm -hmm. And I also got that little area right there within his hand, which I don't want. Do you see all that? Yeah. All right. So those are the things you have to look for when you're doing this technique. And by the way, just so that you know, I'm just showing you this because I'm going to stop this and do it again another way. And then I'm going to do it what I think in this particular case is the right way. I'm trying to show you the different possibilities. You probably saw me do this last week with the dress. Okay. So I just want to, I just want to make sure that I have the opportunity when I do these things to show you exactly how to work with this stuff so that you really know what you're doing. All right. Now I'm using the bracket and I'm bringing this thing down and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click and get that ear. Now I got that ear. Now I still may not have that ear perfectly. Okay. But I think I got the ear. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. I have to make this a little bit smaller still. And I'm going to hold the alt key down. And can you see right now where I'm sitting in that white part of his hand? You see where I am? You see that little thing, my little cursor there, guys? Yeah, I'm sorry, Bill. No, it's okay. Can you see where I am in his little hand there? Yeah. All right, I'm holding the Alt key down. Do you see what happens to my cursor? Yeah. Change. It turns into a negative? Right. Okay, if I click now, what will happen is that will remove that little area. So now, except for the hair, which is a mess, I basically have this guy selected, okay? So what I'm going to do is, just to give you an idea of where we are with this thing, I'm going to go layer zero, and I'm going to create a layer, and I'm going to dump black into that layer. Let me just dump black into that layer. Oh, actually, uh, you know what? I have to wait before I do this, because to be honest with you, it's only going to go behind the guy. See, that's what I did. Let me go edit undo. I forgot I got this thing selected. Let me, let me click on the top one, and let me hit, hit the mask layer. Okay, so now I've masked this guy. Okay, now on layer number one, and the mask, by the way, is, is no longer active because it turned it into that layer mask, and you see it's transparent, right? Right. Okay, so now I'm going to take my paint bucket tool and dump black behind him. And as you can see, I get a fairly decent mask. Not a great mask, but a fairly decent mask. The, the <coughs> mask is a little bit choppy. Can you see it? Yeah. The hair is not good. <clears throat> uh, and... That's it. I mean, it's just, it's a little bit choppy and the air is not good. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to drag this mask to the garbage can and apply it. No, I'm going to delete it. Okay. So now it's gone. So what I want to do is I want to show you another way that you could maybe improve on the mask. And then I'm going to show you what I think is probably the ideal way to do this mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here on my layer copy zero, and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose levels. Uh, do I want to do levels? Yeah, levels. Levels. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the levels and I'm going to start darkening this guy. And let me explain to you why I'm doing what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm basically darkening this guy up as much as I can the reason that I'm doing this, the reason that I am darkening this guy as much as I can is because as I darken him, can you see what's happening to his edge? Right. The edge is beginning to stand out boldly. Yeah, you can okay. See it right. Now, the way, the way that these selections work, the way they work is the um, quick selection tool 
looks to find edges. And the clearer the edges are, the better your selection should be. Okay. So, and we're working, we're working with a layer leveling, which means that it's non-destructive. Right. See that? In other words, this thing here, literally, can just be turned off or thrown away. And we have done no damage to anything, but now we've actually made this thing much darker. So does that make sense to you why I'm doing what I'm doing? It does. Okay. So I'm going to click on layer zero copy. You don't want to be collect clicking on this because there's nothing on it but this adjustment. You actually want to be on this layer. And then what you're going to do is you're going to come over here and you're going to come in and you're going to select this guy again. You're going to try to select this guy again. And it might give you a little bit more trouble to select this it this way, but you're going to come through the process and you're going to select this guy again. Okay. And again, I got the same issue over here where that thing, and I still got the, it looks to me like it's not really helping that much actually. And then I'm going to hold down the shift key and there we go. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my mask to it and I'm going to see, and actually it's fairly good. There's a couple of little spots there. And if I hide this, I get that which is, I'd say, probably about the same. I don't think it's that much different. But I can actually now take this thing and just throw it away. All right? And now I can select this thing. So what I can do if I wanted to is I can select this thing. I can go up to the Select menu, and I can go Select and Mask. And what happens is I get the Select and Mask dialog box, and here are my properties. Uh, last week we worked on this, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, the first thing that I want to do, I want to see if I can get rid of some of that white stuff in the hair. So I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. All right. I want to zoom in on this a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get this brush tool right here. And I'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully see if I can come in here and just paint away a little bit of that hair. I don't see anything happening. No, I don't either. Hold on, let me see here. We go against uh, overlay. And something's happening, but it's not really, I'm not really seeing any effect taking place. All right, well, let, let's see. Maybe that, maybe it will work. We'll find out. This is my brush. This is my refine edge tool, quick selection tool. Let me go edit, uh, step backwards. Maybe that's what it is. Edit, step backwards. Edit, step backwards. That could be what it is. Edit, step backwards. Step backwards. Step backwards. Let me try the refine edge tool. Try that. See if that's it. Yeah, that's it. I, I used the wrong tool. Can you see what's happening? I'm just carefully going around this hair a little bit. I got to be very careful doing this. What I'm doing essentially is I'm, I'm refining that area by his hair. See it? Yeah, okay. that's gotten a little bit pink there. Right. Okay, what that's going to do is that's going to refine that edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties. And before I go to the properties, though, before I do that, let me just do this. Let me bring him up a little bit. Let me bring him up just a bit. Okay, so I go to the properties, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start playing around with him a little bit. Let's see what the radius does if I bring the radius out. I don't see very much with radius, so let's leave it for a second. Let's try smooth. Uh, let me see. Before I do that, let me try feathering it a bit. Uh, I'm not seeing much happening. I'll bring it out way far to see. I don't see. Any, I don't see much happening. Contrast. I'm not seeing very much occurring. I'm not sure why. Let's try shift edges in a bit. Let's see if let's see if I hit okay. What happens with this guy? All right, so let's see. Did it really do anything? It looks like it might have select inverse. And let me try. Let's see what happens when I come in here and paint around the edge a little bit. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do an area. Now I'll go select. You select there. Okay, so you see what it did? See what oh, it did? Yeah, no, I see it. It got rid of all that stuff on right. his. Right, hand. so what it did was it, it enabled me, see? It enabled me oh, to yeah. smooth this out. So I didn't do the whole thing, right? You saw that I just stopped and I, and I only did the area. But if I had continued, let me go select, reselect, okay? 
and see it didn't now I've lost that I've lost that so I can't do it but mm -hmm. let's go edit step backwards maybe maybe I can step backwards edit step backwards edit step backwards nope uh, edit step backwards nope I've lost it I'd have to go back and redo it but the point I'm trying to make is you saw what I did right yeah select deselect I went in and I played around with the settings on and I went to select select and mask all right and there you go and I started off by coming in like this and just carefully painting out and I didn't go deep I just went like right by the very tips of his hair because all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kill that little bit of white that's showing in his hair be very careful what I'm doing okay so you see how I did that yeah Okay, that took all that white away, and that means now that that's going to look much more natural, especially, yeah, that looks pretty good. Then I came into the properties, and then I come over here, and I uh, feathered the edge a little tiny bit. Let's feather the edge a little bit, like that, and then let's bump up the contrast slightly, and let's shift the edge just in a little tiny bit, and I'm going to decontaminate the edge as well. I don't know whether I did enough, but we'll find out. Let's hit okay. And yeah, it looks a little bit better. I still got a couple of areas I could have I could have smoothed it a little bit more here. But you see what I'm saying? See how it, look at his hair. Right. Looks really good. And his shoulders are looking really good. Need a little bit more. I probably should have went a little further with it down in here, but it ain't bad. Okay. So if I wanted to, I could go select the mask again. Let's see, select the mask again a second time. And I could come in here and I could uh, smooth this. Let's try smoothing it see whether that does it and let me uh, bump up the contrast a little bit more and hit okay yeah it's it's unfortunately All I right. should have done it in the first step but anyway you get the general idea yes okay but this isn't it exactly the way I want you to do it so I'm gonna come back here again and I'm going to get rid of this see that's what he looked like to begin see how he looks like in the beginning that's what he looks like after I did that operation. He does look a lot better. Yeah. Still needs to be a little cleaned up in here. Let me get that out of here. So the, here's the other thing I want to show you. This is the other thing I want to show you is I'll get rid of that. Uh, delete it. Okay. And actually now I've, I guess I've painted on him. So I'm going to delete him and I'm going to duplicate this layer again. Let's duplicate that layer. And let me bring that layer up above. There we go. And show it. Okay. So we got our guy back, right? All right. Now, the other way, the other way that we can extract this guy is, I think, pretty cool. It's called a channel pull. Uh, you probably heard that mentioned, but have you ever worked with a channel with the channels before and tried a channel pull before? I have not. No. Anybody in here had any experience with it, Crystal Gracie? No. Okay. So aside from layers, every piece of art is made up of channels. These are the channels, and there's a channel panel. Go to window and go to channel right there. So there's your channels. And what you have is you have a red channel. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the gray part of the image that is used to produce the red aspect of the image. So each one of these channels is for a different color. This is your green aspect. So as you can see, this guy's got more green in him or actually more red in him than he has green. There's more red because he's lighter. The, there's, he's darker, so it's holding back more, more green than it's holding. You understand? Yeah. All right. Now, here's the blue. There's not a lot of blue in this guy. So yeah. the darkest one is the blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that channel. And now we have our extra blue channel, which I'm going to rename mask, M-A-S-K. Okay? So now we have this mask layer we're gonna do pretty much the same thing that we did just a few moments ago we're going to take this mask channel and we're gonna darken this guy as much as we possibly can to make a mask okay is that clear enough what I'm doing yeah you think you can come back here and handle this so far I think so. go to image we're on the mask channel Go to image, adjust, levels, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the black, and I'm going to bring the black up. And can you see them getting darker? Yeah. 
Okay, now the midtones and the lights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the midtones. If I move the midtones towards the black, he's going to get lighter. Watch. See how he gets lighter? Yeah. I don't want that. I want him to get darker. So I'm going to spread the midtones out further, bringing them down, bringing the midtones way down. Um, what, I, what I'm looking at, I'm trying to look at the weaker area. See that little side of his face right there? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty weak little area. Right. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate him as much as possible from his background. This is what, what's most important about this little exercise here is that we're working with a, a, an image that has a very light background. I'm, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to hit the black again. So I'm going to bring the black up as much as I can bring it. See how it's getting nice and black and look what's happening up the hair. <sighs> See, nice and dark. And then I'm going to keep moving this thing over until I get something almost like that. Look at that. Now, what's happening is, you see what's happening out here? Right. Can you, now I'm starting to get a little bit of gray out there. So I'm going to have to move that white over just a hair to get rid of that white. And that's basically what I have. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hit OK. And now what I'm going to do is, and this is very important for you to understand, I'm on that mask channel, aren't I? Yes. All right. Can you see that there's little white areas in here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm making sure that I have white selected. I'm going to get my paintbrush, and I'm going to come in here on my mask channel, okay? Uh, wait a minute. Sorry. Wrong one. Go to my mask channel here, my mask channel, and I'm going to paint with black, and I'm going to remove all that white, as much okay. of it as I can, and I'm going to be very careful how I do it. Do I have that set to 100? I do. Okay, I'm going to just paint this all out. I want to try to get rid of as much of that as I possibly can. Even over here, see right there? I'm going yeah. to carefully get rid of that as well. Okay, I'm really, what I'm, oh, see, I got a little bit of it in the outside. Edit, undo. Do I have that set to, see, I don't. I have it set soft. Let me make it hard. All right, make it hard. That's better. All right, let's go edit, uh, step backwards. There we go. Okay, and is that hard? Yes. So it's hard. I don't want soft because soft is, is going to uh, bleed, and I don't want it to bleed. I want it to kiss the edge and go right up to the edge. So you see what I'm doing is I'm trying to get rid of, and I actually could zoom in on this, okay? See what I mean? And when I zoom in on it, it actually makes it a little tiny bit easier for me to come in here and nail those little spots. I know this seems like a lot of work, but let me tell you something. When you're doing this kind of work, this is what really makes the difference between something looking sensational and just mediocre. So you're just going to come in here and just look for the little white areas and just kiss it away. You know what I mean? Like just touch it, just touch it and make it go away as much as you can. You know, you don't have to get every single bit of it, but you want, as much of it as you possibly can get away, you're just going to make it go away. And it looks like I got some there. I'm looking for anything that resembles white to me. You know, see what I mean? See how I'm doing that? So up on the arm, is that going to be dark enough, or do we need to get rid of that? Too? Yeah, no, no, no. I haven't got there yet. I'm going, I'm going there right now, and I'm getting rid of it. I get rid of anything that resembles white. I get rid of all the white, as much of it as I possibly can. Like I said, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the more you get away, the more you get rid of, the better your mask is going to be. It's just, you know, it's the kind of thing you take a few minutes with and you check everything. See, like down here, there's a little bit on the hand, okay? Because what will happen, just so that you understand, it may seem ridiculous, but because that's there, what it's going to do is it's going to leave a semi, a partially semi-transparent area. It's not going to be a completely solid mask. Yeah. So by painting this thing absolutely black like I'm doing, that right up to the edge, I'm creating a sharp mask right on up to where I'm going, okay? Unfortunately, I, I'm stuck with a round shape, so it makes it a little more difficult for me because I can't really conform to the edge of that shape. I just got to go up to the edge as close to it as I possibly can, okay? Let me see. We're almost there. There we go. Let me see what the head looks like. <coughs> see, there's a little bit here. Got to get rid of that. There's a little bit here. It really pays 
to do this work. It really pays to, to do this because it's going to make a really nice mask for you. And this is probably the mask that you're going to want to use. This is a uh, channel mask. And it's a two-step process. First step is to come in and actually make the mask. I want you to see something. Look at the hair. Isn't that wet, wild? Look at that hair. Isn't that great? That's yeah. detail, baby. Yeah, yeah, you got it. That's detail. And it's nice and it's there for you. Okay? Now, there's a little bit of a nick on his ear. I'm going to bring this down really small because I'm going to want to go in there and I'm going to want to clean that up as well. I, I know you probably think, oh, my God, this guy's out of his mind. I'm really not. I mean, this is what it takes to come up with a nice mask. And then you're just going to come down and check him. There's a little area right here I don't particularly like. I don't like the uh, shine on it. So I'm going to try to remove it a little bit, get rid of some of it, as much of it as I can. Okay, that's probably good. Better than it was at least, right? And then we'll come down and see now I, I've got a couple of things over here I'm not exactly crazy about. I got this little glitch right here. So I'm going to click, hold the, up, oh, control Z. I have to change that to white. If I go outside, this has got to be white. Let's go edit undo step backwards let me click over here hold down the shift key hold on shift key and click here there we go edit control Z I went too far in try it like this okay that's probably good click here carefully and let's go to about here okay now yeah, it's a little bit funky but anyway, let's see what else we got. I think that all looks pretty good. I'm not sure whether I, this might be something here. Yeah, there's a little bit of crud here. So I'm getting rid of it. When I get down close like this, I can see crud. Yeah. Get rid of that crud. All right, let's go to the view menu. And let's go fit on screen. Now, that looks like a pretty good mask, wouldn't you say? I think so, yeah. So do you guys see how I did this? You guys think you can handle this so far? So far, yeah. All right. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to go to our layers. Or actually, before we do that, let's go to our channel. Uh, I'm going to hold down the uh, command key or control key. Click on this thing. And I'm selecting this. And I get this selected here. And what I really want is I want the guy selected. So I'm going to go image, adjust, invert. Okay. Whoops. Control Z. Hold on. Let's go. Select, deselect. Hold on, let me just see here. Uh, now let's see what happens. Oop, control Z. Hold on, let me go up to my layers and let me click on this guy and let me mask it. And okay, so let's go image, adjust, invert. There we go. Okay, so there he is. There the guy is. So he's selected. Now, unfortunately, it looks like I'm still getting some of that hair up there. So what I would do with this is I would go, you could maybe go from here. Let's see. Uh, select a mask. So see, I'm clicking on the layer mask, and I'm going to go to select a mask. Okay. And this, I come in here. First of all, I'm going to get my refine edge tool. And again, I'm going to be very careful about how I do this. I don't want to go nuts with this because, you know, I don't want to cut away all this hair. All I want to do is I want to clean up a little, uh, control Z, wrong one again, it's this guy here, there we go. I want to very carefully just go across the top of his hair, don't go too far in, but just a very, along the edge of his hair, we're trying to get rid of any of that white that's showing, see, okay, and that's probably pretty good right there. Now what we're going to do is, let's try going to the properties. And let's go to radius, and let's bring the radius up a little bit. Okay, and I think that's working. And let's go smooth just a little bit. Um, I think that's working. And let's feather it slightly. And let's go up with the contrast slightly. And let's shift the edge in a little tiny bit. And that might be okay. Decontaminate the edge. Okay. 
It looks like it might be basically all right. Yep. Can you see? Yep. Can you see how that looks? Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back um, and watch the recording. Okay. Me too. <laughs> there it is. Look at him. Look at that. See how that he looks? A lot of the weight out. Huh? That took a lot of the weight out. Yeah, and also if you take a look, take a look at his body. Can you see how how nicely cleaned up his body is? Okay, so did that when you saw me do that, you got it? You guys think you got it? Yes, the only unfortunate thing is now my husband thinks he's got to do like 2,000 push-ups a day. <laughs> well, that I can't help you with. But at any rate, I, I just want you to see. Now, let's go zoom out. Let's go view, zoom out. And let's take a look at him. See, there he goes. Look at, look at how beautiful he's silhouetted against that background. So what I'm saying to you is, and I'm going to do, I think I have enough time to do one more. I'm going to do one more because, uh, number one, I really enjoy doing this. And number two, I, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that you guys are absolutely clear how to do this because I want you to be able to make this as clean as this. And guess what? You can. You can do this just as well as I did right here if you just follow the steps that I did. Um, I showed you how to do it. I showed you how to do it using this tool right there, which you can use if you want. I also showed you how to do it by creating a channel, okay, by creating a channel, which is the other way that I did it. So, but basically, it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Uh, I particularly like the channel because in this particular case, the channel works simply because uh, I have a nice guy who's a back a, a posed against the background. Look at that hair, man. Can you believe that? I mean, you yeah. know, just for the heck of it, because this is pretty wild. Let me come in here. Let me change that from black to red. Let me, let me actually make that red because I think if we make it red, he'll stand out even more. Let me just make that red. Do I got that layer selected? I do. Let me make that red and let's see what that looks like against red. Yeah, look at, I mean, see, that looks phenomenal. Look at that hair up there. Now, remember, remember, this is what's most important. You aren't going to see this guy against red. You're not going to see him against black. You're going to see him against a wooded background. Right. So really, in the end, you wouldn't be able to see very much of that. But look at how clean he is, he is silhouetted. It's pretty amazing, wouldn't you say? The, those channels are really cool, and I had no idea that, it's like an RGB thing, red, green. Well, there's also, just so that you know, let me, let me go file open. Let me open another one. Let me open another one. Let's go, with, uh, let's go with this guy right here, okay? Let's go with this guy right here. And let me go file save as. This guy's a little bit different. Then we'll save this one as a uh, Photoshop, and we'll call him, what did I call a male one? Let's call him male two. Uh, M-A-L-E dash two, and hit save. Okay, now, here's the thing. This is an RGB. This image is an RGB. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go image mode CMYK, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, can you see what happened? It converted, oh. it converted to CMYK. Okay. Wow. Okay? So, it depends on the image. The image can either be an RGB or CMYK. In the case of our piece, the image is in RGB. All right. I'm going right. to go edit undo because I don't, but I just wanted to show you that because the channels exist for CMYK and RGB. Those channels are what we use as designers behind the screens okay. to, to make this image colorful so that it can either be used for print or the web. But we also have the ability to make channels out of these layers in order to help us make images. Um, like we're doing, all right? So what I'm gonna do with this is, I'm gonna come in here again, and uh, let me zoom in on this guy. First of all, let's go edit undo, and make it back to RGB, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, um, real quickly, I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna see if I can just kinda quickly cut this guy out of his shorts. Let me just get rid of the bottom part of him, because again, we don't need the top of this guy, we need just like the bottom of him. So let me, might as well get that done as well. Also, I'm going to probably cut away a lot of this as well. Um, it's still going to give me trouble, but I can minimize my trouble. Can you see that kind of gray around him? Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to cut, 
as much of that away as I possibly can. At the same time, I'm cutting his his shorts off because I know that it's going to give me trouble when I when I actually try to. And then I'm going to come over here like this, all the way down like that. Come up to here, come over to here, and I'm going to see if I can just kind of like work carefully around the finger, just about like this. I'm going to probably just rough cut it for a second, and then I'll come back in and I'll remove the other part of it. Let me do that first. Okay, so there you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch that to white, and I'm just going to paint bucket it in with white. There we go. And there, and there, and there, and there. I'm actually the paintbrush tool now because the thing is not going to go any further real quick. So we just white it out. There it goes. So most of that's gone. Now that solves a lot of my problems. Select, deselect. Now it doesn't, it doesn't, select these like doesn't solve all my problems but can you see how i got rid of a lot of the problem right right there's still problems here so what i do want to do though is i want to come in here and i do want to probably cut this away so i'm going to come in with my polygon lasso tool and it's important for you to understand the polygon lasso tool does just as good for a situation like this which is very small area okay it does just as good as if i were using the pen tool the pen tool is the one that they generally recommend for this, but I generally just use the polygon tool because I think it works pretty much as good as the other. And it is a little bit faster. It isn't as clean. But, you know, see, see how I'm doing it? I'm not taking big bites. I'm taking little tiny bits at a time, and I'm trying to hit right on his skin. I'm not trying to go into the other area. I'm trying to hit right on his skin. And I'm just going to work up a little bit more. And pretty soon I'll be out of here. Let me get this thing out of here like this, like that, like that, and like that. There we go. And I'm out. And then I come over here. And then all I'm going to do is paint that again with white. There we go. See, so that's pretty good. Select, deselect. Okay, now let's go view, fit on screen. Okay, so there he is. All right, now if I wanted to, you know, I could come in here and I could paint I could paint away some of this as well, you know. I'm not, I'm not going to go nuts with it, but I, I could move away, move some of that out, get some of that out as well. I'm not sure how it's going to help me, but it will help me. It will help me. Okay, so there we have it. There we have the, our guy. All right, now once again, uh, we can do a couple of things. We can go in here and we can play around with um, uh, my quick selection tool. Uh, I can come in here and I can create a layer. Let me unlock him and duplicate him. Uh, and I can create a layer mask, you know what I mean, with this and this way. But what I'm going to do is the same thing I did before. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a look at the channels. So there's that channel. That's not real good. That channel is probably a little bit better. Can you see my problem right there? Right. Yeah, so that's going to give me trouble. That right there, whoops, I hit the wrong one, the blue. The blue is probably the one that I want. The blue is probably the one that I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the blue channel, okay? Now I got the blue channel duplicated. Uh, I'm going to select it and call it mask, all right? Now remember, this is going to be a little more difficult because I got this stuff going on out here, and I'm going to have to see if I can deal with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in this area right here first. Okay, and make sure I'm on my mask. Uh, hold on, make sure I'm on my mask. I should really bring this channel out so I, I don't get so confused all the time. I'm on my mask layer. I'm going to go image, adjust, levels. Now, this one here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move the white up a little bit. I need to bring some of that white up. I need to start bringing the black up too now. See, so, what, so you see how, that, see how that part of the line is starting to dark up real good? Right. This area is not so much. This area is giving me trouble. So I'm going to have to see whether I can remove some of that and see what happens when I go dark. See what, what's happening? Yeah. Right. So I'm running into a problem with this, which means that I'm going to end up having to do some, some carving. Okay. So I'm going to hit cancel right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to I guess I'll start right about there. Let me, I have to zoom in a little bit on this because this is going to be a little bit tricky to do. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start cutting this guy out a little bit. You know, I'm just going to come down and I'm going to cut him out a little bit 
get rid of some of this this darker area here just like that you know now I'm not gonna do this like totally com completely crazy perfect because right. I really don't have the time to do it but in reality if I were doing this I would do this real crazy I would take more time than I'm taking to do this I'm only doing this quickly now because I don't have the time so I just want you to understand that I, I would take more time doing it the only reason I'm not is I'm limited in my time and I'm trying to make it as quickly as I can just to get it roughed out and I probably don't do everything in one shot I probably go to a certain point and then I get rid of that and then I'll continue working so I'll, let me go back up to here right here okay and then when we, excuse me Bill when we use that polygon lasso tool like you just did and we go back to the beginning of our line and then we just do we click on that yeah you what you do is you go back to the very beginning and click where you started and you should see it. I'll show you next time I do it okay the running then the running ant show okay yeah what you're looking for is when you reach the point when, when you reach the the starting point I'll show you here I'm gonna get the polygon lasso tool watch when I come around and do this I'll show you what I'm talking about you're gonna go down and you're gonna you know polygon lasso around the area that you want to remove like I'm doing okay and I'm as I say just understand I'm really not doing the best job of this right. I'm doing right. it quickly because I don't have enough time to do it really tight but I would do it tight I would actually yeah, spend time really flew by Wow yeah well it takes a little bit of time to do this stuff and also I don't want to rush because I want you to make sure that you are really comfortable with what I'm doing here that's the whole point is right. you know not that I do this perfectly but that you know what the hell it is I'm doing so you can actually right. go in and do it you know so I see what I'm doing now is I'm gonna go I'm gonna go way up because I'm having a problem with this entire arm and this entire yeah, area here yeah so I'm gonna go way up and I'm gonna try to alleviate as much of that problem as I possibly can so I might as well go all the way up to here okay so you're gonna probably have to, if you use this guy you're probably gonna have to do the same thing right actually that what, what I'm doing here so all I'm saying is you just you know however much time it takes you to do that that's gonna be your your biggest headache in other right. words right. you know what I mean the work involved in doing this is more laborious than any other part of this really right that's pretty good and now watch when you were talking about how to get to the beginning I'm gonna come here come here come here come here I started here watch what happens when I actually go to the very beginning where I started there you see the little circle a uh, little circle okay click okay dancing okay. is that means I've closed that shape you guys got that okay got it okay now I'm just gonna paint this in see paint this in and see what I did select yeah. deselect now let me see if I'm good enough view fit on screen let me see if I'm good enough to get this extraction done you know what I probably am I do have some darkness over here I think I can control this now so you see, see what I'm doing is I'm just basically trying to alleviate my problem as much as I can so with my mask layer I'm gonna go back in I'm gonna go image adjust levels again and I'm gonna bring this over here and I'm going to bring the white up a little bit bring the white up a little bit so you see how I got rid of that white there's a little bit there oh, still yeah. okay yeah I got rid of that white I'll bring it up a little bit more and the whites pretty much gone now yeah. I'm going to start going in the other direction I'm gonna start bringing the black up okay so you see what I'm doing is I'm trying to very carefully very carefully bringing up the black at the same time I'm preserving the white I got to be careful not to lose my white otherwise yeah. I'm gonna lose this mask so I'm yeah. going to bring this black up as much as I can and he's not as good as the other one he's not as good of a mask as the other one so I think I'm probably stuck and actually I'm getting pretty dark see how I'm getting pretty dark that's yeah. as, as good as it's gonna get but I think he'd be the better shape for a centaur though <laughs> right and my point is can you see I'm still able to do this right right okay so so you see what I did essentially I moved the black up I moved the, the mid-tones way over here and see how I've clipped the white so right. I need the white I preserved the white I brought my gray tones way over and I brought my black way over and I get something that I can work with right you exactly. guys got that see, I can't believe how much better you can see it that is amazing it's amazing isn't it it is so now I hit okay now I'm still on my mask layer I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before 
I'm going to start by zooming in. Let's zoom in on the guy's face first. And I'm going to paint. I'm going to get my paint tool. Remember, I'm painting with black. Yeah. I'm going to make my, my uh, brush smaller. And I'm going to be very careful now to come in here. And I'm going to paint right up to the edge. Let's go right up to the edge. Be very careful. You don't want to go beyond the edge. And I could probably zoom in a little bit closer if I wanted to. And I can make this a little smaller if I wanted to. And I could just, I'm going to paint up to the edge. And like I said, guys, when you do this, the more time you spend doing this, if you spend, as opposed to 15 minutes, if you spend a half hour doing this, you're going to get a cleaner mask. Now, I'm not saying you have to spend a half hour, but if I was doing this as a real job and I knew I had enough time to do it, I very possibly would spend a half hour because I would try very hard. Let me zoom in again. See, what I'm looking to do is see what I want to do is I want a clean edge. That's what it is. The cleaner I can get with that edge, the right. better my mask is going to end up being. And that is important to me. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go right up to that edge and I'm going to make it black. I'm going to be very careful to try to make that thing as black as I can because I'm trying to get all that detail. See, that's and then if you accidentally go outside of the edit undo. Like, then you edit just, undo. Right, okay. All right, the other thing is there's also a history panel. You know the history panel, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a history panel which you can actually use to back off of something if you do something wrong. So right. I'm just okay. keep. I'm just going to keep going. Now let's go a little bit more down here. The head area looks pretty good so far. I think the rest of it I can get. There's a little bit of crap in here. I think I should get rid of. It might be on my computer screen. Okay. Now here's the area. You need to clean mine. <laughs> yeah. This this is the area that gets a little bit dicey. I'm just going to come in here. I probably make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Get rid of that quicker. Okay. And this is where it gets a little treacherous. You got to be very careful here. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to nip away as much of it as I can, and then I'll go back in with a smaller brush and clean it up. Okay, see that? And let's see, let's go down and see what else we got. Yeah, it's looking pretty good in here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you come up, you just get rid of it, get rid of it. It's got to be black. Very important that your mask be black. Let me make this smaller. Oh, too much. Let's go back up a bit. Okay, come in here, clean it all up. Anything, anywhere that you see anything that does not look black, you're just going to fill it in to make it make sure it's black. Now there's stuff going on with the hands that we'll deal with later. Okay, and right. don't not the bottom too much because the bottom's going to be blended into the horse eventually. Okay. Okay. So we'll keep going down here, and I'm going to remove anywhere. I'm going to go all around. You see what's happening out here? Can you see there's a little bit of dirt there? Right. I'm going to have to deal with that too. I got to get rid of that, or it's going to show up. So let me. I'll deal with this hand first. And then I'll go in there and see if I can clean that up as well. There we go. And see, as I say, I didn't do the best job. See how you, it's a little rough there. I didn't do the best job cutting them out. I would say that, you know, you would probably spend a little more time and do a slightly better job than I did. I don't have the time to do it. So I'm, I'm rushing a little bit. But I think I'm doing it enough that you get the general idea. And that's yeah. what really matters. You got to be able to do this. Okay, so that looks all good so far. Let's see his other arm. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. See, there's some crap out here. So I'm going to switch it to white. Okay. Right? That's, and, okay. and I'm going to make my brush bigger. And I'm just going to, you know, get rid of that little bit of stuff that's on the outside there. That little bit of cleaning up will help my mask a little bit. What do I see over here? What the heck is that? Oh, that's got to go. Huh. I didn't know. Yeah, if that anywhere like anywhere that you see white. Anywhere that you see white, I'm see, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it is. A little bit of white over here. This is an area where there's a little bit of white. I'm just going to come in here, and I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, that's it. Really good. And I think that's good. Let's go up. Let's see. I think we're good. I think we're pretty good. I have a little bit of cleanup to do right there. Like I say, I mean, I am doing this because I want you to understand that the, the better you do with this, the better your mask will be in the end. I see a little bit of stuff there. And he's just going to clean this up. He's going to try to go to the edge if you can. Try to go right to the edge if you can. The more of this not black stuff you get rid of, the better your mask is going to be in the end. That looks about as good as I think I'm going to be able to get. Pretty, All right? pretty good. Let's go view, fit on screen. And now what I'm going to do is 
I am going to hold down the shift key and click, oh, uh, shift key, hold on the control key or the command key, and then I'm going to go to my layers, and on my copy, I'm going to mask it, and I'm going to go invert, image, adjust, invert, okay, to invert the mask, hide the background, and there he is. Now, let's see what happens when we put a layer behind him with red on it. Let's see what he looks like. See how he looks. He looks pretty darn good, wouldn't you think? Yeah, a lot that, that was pretty tricky. So I've done two of them now, and I think they both were done pretty much the same way, right? Yeah. So um, you guys think you got it? Now what I will do, just because I still have a few more minutes, uh, I'm going to go back into my layers, and I'm going to click on my on my layer mask, right okay. click, and go select and mask. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Okay, let's let's start by zooming in, and let me very carefully, very carefully, just pick the refine edge and just touch the lightest possible way possible. Be very careful with this. The outermost edge of this guy's hair, just be very careful. You don't want to go very far in it. You just want to touch the edge of his hair. And anywhere that you see a lot, like right there. Okay, so that's about it. That's all you need to do on his hair. Now, the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to come in here, and you're going to play with the radius, bring the radius out a little bit. All right, I don't know. I'm going to bring it out to two. You have to play with this a little bit. I can already see he's he's actually cleaning up already. Uh, I'm going to smooth it some, and I'm going to feather it a little bit. Let me feather it just slightly, and let me contrast it ever so slightly, and let me shift and decontaminate, all right? And I haven't moved them much. That's right. the important thing, just a bit. Hit OK. And did you see it clean up? Yeah, I did. Did you see it? It actually cleaned up, boom, just like that? Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? It's incredible, yeah, wow. It on screen, look at that, look at that guy. Does he look great or what? So much better, wow. Well, there you go, guys, that's it. We're gonna do the horses tomorrow night, and um, we'll work on putting them together, um, and I'll show you how to finish this, but we're gonna, we're gonna work on the horses, we'll do the horses tomorrow night. Um, 46. We still have a few more minutes. Uh, let me think. What can I do right now? Uh, you want to do another guy real quick? Whatever you, you want. Yeah. yeah. Let's try one more guy. I just want to make sure. I want to make sure. Let me go file save. I want to make sure that you guys absolutely know how to do this. So let me I, I always follow along. And even in doing that, I just learned so much more. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we got a similar situation. We got this guy. First of all, I'm going to crop this guy. I'm going to crop this guy quite a bit. I'm going to crop this guy just to here. Make that easier. Image crop. That's much easier. Let's go view fit on screen. Okay, fit on screen. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, and again, I'm not going to make a big deal out of this, but I'm just going to select, deselect. I'm going to come in here very quickly and I'm going to cut the bottom of this guy off. I'm actually even going to do this. I'm going to even do this in a in a cruder way, okay? Because I don't have the time. But you you gen, you you really do understand that the more time you spend doing this stuff, the better it's going to look in the end. Absolutely. Don't really have enough time to do this as well as I would like to do it, but I'll do it you know fairly well. And then I'm just going to keep coming around like this. I, I need his hands, so I'm not going to cut his hands away. I'm just going to cut the rest of his body away. All right? Let me cut him away like this. There we go. This is good enough. Down to here, over to here, over to here, up to his hand, and then just move around his hand, cutting, cutting it away as much as I can, leaving the hand. See, it's a pain in the neck, unfortunately, but that's the picture. So let me keep going. Yep, we're almost there. And just cut this out. Okay. Like I said, you could do a much better job at this than I'm doing, but polygon lasso tool, uh, if if you handle it properly, will be just fine for this operation. You know? 
That's yeah, really fun. There we go. And now I'm just going to come up. And remember, when you go to where you started, you get circle. the circle. So okay. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my paintbrush tool, and I'm going to make it set to white. And I'm just going to paint all that in with white. I'm just paint it all in with white. And then he will be ready to go. There we go. Let me make that bigger. There we go. Boom. <laughs> right? There we go. Select, deselect. All right. View, fit on screen. And select, deselect. Okay. So now, channels. Let's see what we got. We got red, not very good. We got green, a little better. Yeah. Blue. Uh, the blue is actually the best. Yeah. Right? Can you, can you see the difference? Yeah, definitely. You see how that's not quite as dark? Yep. That's dark. Now, just I want you to understand, this is very important. What that means essentially is the darker the, darker the, the channel, the less color is being put in. So the blue, there's less blue than there is red. If you look at the red, you see how light the red is? Yeah. Yeah, more, more red is being used in this than blue. That's why that channel is like that. So I'm going to, I'm going to duplicate the channel, okay, call it mask. And this is ex pretty much exactly the same way I did the others. Just go to the image menu and go to adjustments and go to levels. Bring the levels up so you can see what you're doing. You have three sliders that you're dealing with. You have the black slider, which brings your blacks up. You have your grays and you have your whites. I'm going to start off by bringing the whites over a little bit to clean that background up. You see how that just drops yeah. that all away? Bring the black up. I'm going to start bringing the black up and I'm going to bring the black up rather extreme because I want to darken them up. And you see how he's darkening up really good. Good. And now I'm going to bring this guy way over until I see him really darkening up. I want him to get almost black. Can you see my, my crud starting to come in, though? Yeah. yeah that means i got to bring the white up again to get rid of that. See how I got rid of that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Cool. I think I'm pretty much where i got to be. I can't, I can't really go much further. That's probably as far as I go, and I'm starting to lose that. I'm starting to get that that gray back again. So I think that's about as good as it's going to go. So I'm going to hit okay. 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 So there's your mask. And then it's the same operation. You just basically come in here and you're going to make sure you got black and you're just going to paint this guy out, paint the rest of him out. Okay. I'm not going to do as good of a job because we're almost out of time, but I will, I will generally paint him out and then I will pull my mask and we can, see what he looks like okay I think I'm going to just end it like that I know it's not a perfect as the others but you know you just keep in mind the more detail you paint out the better your mask is going to be that looks good enough for our purposes okay so once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mask hold down the control key click it okay then I'm going to get out of my channels go to my layers and I'm going to duplicate this layer again I like to duplicate the layer okay and I'm going to mask that layer. And then I'm going to invert the mask. All right, so I'm gonna go image, adjust, invert. invert. Okay. And now when I hide that, there he is. I will now put a layer behind him in red and we'll see what he looks like. We'll go in here and dump the red in there. Come on, there you go. So he actually looks okay. Wow. So again, what we're gonna do is go back to the layers, I'm gonna select this, and notice down at the bottom here. Can you see down the bottom there? What do you see? Oh, that all the grayish. Yeah. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your paint. You're going to get your paintbrush and make sure your black is selected and bring your bring your uh, up and just paint. Look, paint it out. Okay. Got I'm it. painting on the mask. I'm painting yeah, on the okay. mask. See okay. it? That's what I'm doing. I'm painting on the mask. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go select and mask. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to use my refine edge brush very carefully. Just go along the edge of his hair. Be very careful not to go too far in. It's very yeah. important. All you're doing is you're removing a little bit of the white fringe around his hair. Okay. Yeah. That's it. You don't want to go nuts with this. It's right. very important. Then come to the properties, and then you're just going to come in here, and I'm going to bring the radius out to maybe like two, 
I'm going to bring the smoothing up slightly. I'm bringing it up to about six. I'm just throwing these numbers in here. If it doesn't work, you're going to edit, undo, and go back and do it better. I, I'm just throwing numbers in. Feather it. I'm going to bring it up to about 1.2 feather. And then I'm going to contrast it slightly. And I'm going to shift the edge a little tiny bit. And, yeah, it looks okay so far. And then I'm going to decontaminate the edge and hit OK. And look at that. Did you see it go away? Yeah. That All right. Was... There you go. He actually looked great, doesn't he? Yeah. Wow. Amazing. All right. So we just did three of them very quickly. That is my lesson for, the t for tonight. You guys have any final thoughts or any final questions? Just amazing. And thank you. And I will be following along with the video. You think you can do it? Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah. And just so that you understand, Crystal, it, it, I did it. I did it the same way all three times in the end. I used the channel. I used the channel. Okay? That's what I used. I used the channel. And what I was looking for, I was looking for the darker channel. I was looking for the, the channel that had the most contrast. I'm looking for contrast because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the channel as a mechanism to enable me to darken and cut him out. Okay, without driving myself nuts. And as a matter of fact, you take a look at the hands. See, see, look at the hands. Yeah, they look pretty darn good. It's even though, even though I wasn't really very careful yeah. about how I did it. Can you yeah. see how good they actually look? Pretty good. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So I mean, it really works in an amazing way. All I can tell you is that if you were to spend just a tiny bit more time doing what I did. Yours would even look better than this because this looks pretty darn good under the circumstances. So if you spend a few more minutes with it, it'll even look better. And this is what you're going for. Keep in mind, you are not going to be putting this against red like this. The only reason I'm doing this is I want to demonstrate how well he's cut out. That's where we're going with this. Tomorrow night when we come in here, we'll work on the horses and we'll begin the assembly of these two guys. So any final thoughts before we wrap her up for tonight? I don't think so. Just so, just save it and name it as it is. Name it, save it, and name it. Just male one, male two, and male three because it's not the final composition. This is really. I'm going to call this male three. M A L E dash three. Oop, 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 three. There, there. Okay. okay. I'm saving these because I am going to actually use these tomorrow night. One of them, at least, if it's not more than one of them. I'm going to build the. Uh, I'm going to start off tomorrow night by taking the. Um, horses apart we'll do the horse and then after we get the horses done we'll see what it's going to take to put these two together and make them into one solid unit cool okay guys yes thanks. i had a lot of fun i don't know about you i enjoyed it yeah i went it flew by yeah well, well we thank you for coming i hope you come tomorrow we'll be there thank you have a good I'm night everybody. it just depends on work are you good crystal do you think you know how to handle this now yeah, I think I got it. Was it easy? I really, my goal was to try to make it easy. Did I succeed? It looks easy. Uh, it will be. It will be. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just watch what I do if you have a problem. Watch what I do. And That's keep in idea. mind, keep in mind, let the program do as much of it as it possibly can for you. When you run into a situation where you have backgrounds that have color that are interfering with your mask, you might have to do a little bit of preliminary carving like I did. Okay. Right. right. That polygon lasso tool is pretty amazing. It's, it's more than good enough to do the work that we're doing here. It really is, especially yeah. when you have the refine and mask, uh, you know, when you, when you have this, this, this panel right here, select and mask, yeah. you, know, when you can go in there and you can do this stuff in here and clean up those edges. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, that is really, really cool. So, okay. Thank you so much. And everybody have a good night. And All right. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.